I'm an enormous admirer of the filmography of Margareta von Trotter. My introduction to her work, her most famous film as far as I know, is 1981's Marianne and Julian, a spectacular masterpiece. Trotter and cinematographer Franz Raff, with whom she would collaborate with more than once, composed this spectacular vision of the relationship between these two women, the titular Marianne and Julian. Trotter wrote the film's screenplay, and it stars, just so, double check, Jutta Lamp and Barbara Sukawa. Jutta plays Julian and Barbara plays Marianne. The plot synopsis which has been submitted to Wikipedia is considered, or maybe too long or excessively detailed. Please help improve it by removing unnecessary details and making it more concise. That was in April 2021. Well, that may happen one day. Hopefully it does not. But just in case it does, let's have a record of the entire transcript out here. I know you can access previous versions of the page, but most people aren't aware that you can do that or, or can be bothered to, I think is more accurate. And, um, you know, there's this, they're not going to... If it's there, it's there, and they'll read it. And if it's not there... Well, here we, here we go. Two sisters, both dedicated to women's civil rights, fight for it in very different ways. The story is interspersed with flashbacks into the sisters' childhood. Julianne works as a feminist journalist, campaigning for a woman's right to abortion while Marianne commits herself to a violent revolutionary terrorist group. The film quickly informs us that Marianne has abandoned her husband and child. Her husband arrives at Julianne's house and states that she must take Jan, their son, because he has to leave the country for work. Julianne is not supportive of her sister's choices because she feels that they are damaging to the women's movement and informs the husband that she does not have time to care for the child. The husband steps out to go get something, promising to return, but instead takes his life, leaving Jan without a guardian. Marianne meets with Julianne to discuss her political views of her sister and urge her to join the movement. Julianne informs her of her husband's suicide and of her intention to find a foster home for Jan. Marianne asks her sister to watch over Jan, but Julianne replies, you would have me take on the life that you chose to leave, basically stating, so what's not good enough for you is good enough for me. Julianne's refusal does not stop Marianne from continuing in the movement. She is content to commit Jan to foster care because she believes that any life he has in foster care will be better than the life many children have in third world countries. The sisters' paths continue to cross as Marianne regularly bursts in unannounced to her sister's life. On one occasion, Marianne wakes her and her long-term boyfriend up at 3am to make makes coffee for two of her comrades and goes through Julianne's clothes for anything she might like. Soon afterward, we discover that Marianne has been arrested and is being held in a high-security prison. Julianne goes to visit her sister. When she arrives, she is searched and, after being left in the waiting room, the guard returns and informs her that Marianne refuses to see her. Julianne goes home agonising over her inability to communicate with her sister and see how she is doing. Her boyfriend suggests that she write to her sister, telling her how she feels. The film goes into a flashback of their childhood, where we see the closeness of the sisters. Julianne mails the letter and soon after is able to visit her sister. They argue often, but Julianne continues to visit her sister. Following a bad argument when Marianne slaps her sister, Marianne is moved to a maximum security prison where the two are separated by a pane of glass and must communicate through an intercom. Julianne becomes so obsessed with her sister and her problems that her own relationships begin to fall apart. Her boyfriend suggests that they take a vacation. While on vacation, they see Marianne on TV, but cannot understand what has happened to her because of the language barrier. Julianne runs back to their hotel and calls her parents to find that Marianne has committed suicide, which Julianne and her father do not accept. Julianne begins an obsessive journey to discover what really happened. This destroys her relationship with her boyfriend of ten years. She ultimately proves to herself that Marianne was murdered, but when she calls the papers of the news, she is informed that her sister's death is old news and nobody cares if it was murder or suicide. Julianne is left with the knowledge of it, but cannot convince the papers to defend the name of a dead terrorist. Later, Julianne is reunited with Jan because someone attempts to murder him by arson when they find out who his mother was. Julianne takes him back home with him after he has undergone extensive reconstructive surgery. He has a look and has no interest in having a relationship with his aunt. He has nightmares of the fire that nearly killed him. The film ends with him walking into Julianne's workroom and tearing up the picture of his mother that is on the wall. Julianne tells him, You are wrong, Jan. Your mother was a great woman. I'll tell you about her. Jan says that he wants to know everything and Jan then yells, Start now. Start now. The film fades out on Julianne's face looking at him. I'd like to read out some of the IMDb reviews here. Riga, on the 24th of January 2005. A 10 out of 10. One of the best narrative films of the 1980s. 
The film is a fictional reworking of the true story of the Eslin sisters, one of whom was a successful social democratic feminist writer and the other a revolutionary member of the terrorist Bader Meinhof group, also called the Red Army Faction. Three members of the real Bader Meinhof group, Andreas Bader, Gudrun Enslin and Jean Karl Rasp, mysteriously committed suicide while in prison after other members of the RAF allegedly participated in the kidnapping and eventual murder of a wealthy businessman and an aborted hijacking attempt. Popular opinion in Germany and most other places has always held that Bader, Enslin and Rasp were murdered by the state. Much evidence seems to point towards a reasonable doubt that the three took their own lives. Von Trotter takes the story of these two women of, and creates a kind of historical canvas, much as Orson Welles does with Hearst in Citizen Kane, to explore a wide range of issues concerning modern political and social life. The film is remarkably fair-minded. Although the narrative spends much more time with Julianne and the social democratic journalist, it does not stack the deck towards her. Her reformist views towards social change seems forced and at times desperate, nor does Von Trotter romanticize Marianne, the revolutionary. Her actions often ill-conceived and her confidence that history will prove her correct seem equally forced and desperate. Amazingly, Von Trotter creates a dialectic in this film by actually sympathising with both women. She seems to suggest that in the remarkable confusion and despair of the late 20th century, simply to attempt to remain engaged with a project that desires fundamental change is an act of hope. The film is probably best known for its impeccable acting. The two leading performers, Barbara Sukawa, Marianne, and Jutta Lemp, Julianne, are extraordinary. These scenes together are examples of some of the finest acting in contemporary cinema. The supporting performances in this film are also superb. One of the remarkable things is the way the film shows that two children from the same family could become radicalised in such different ways. The film definitely roots the women's politicalisation politicalization, that's, that's how it reads, in their family and national history. Why does one sister become convinced that violent revolution is possible and necessary, while the other becomes convinced that a non-violent war of position is the more appropriate choice? Both women have clearly broken from the conservative tradition of their upbringing in the homes of their Protestant minister father, but what is it that has caused the, ide the ideological differences? Von Schroeder is wise enough not to answer this question directly or didactically. The late Canadian film critic Jay Scott said in a review of the film, the methodology is Proustian. Von Trotter, Proustian, excuse me. Von Trotter cuts with effortless clarity back and forth through the sisters' lives. This seems to be a remarkably efficient way of explaining the film structure and effect. The remarkable editing of this film by Dagmar Hertz, whose excellent work has won him three German film awards, check out his equally amazing contributions to Maximilian, Maximilian Schell's End of the Game. That's a quality film, actually. Jeanine... Mira Fells Malu and Volker Schlondorf's Voyager. I don't think I've seen Voyager. I've seen some of Schlondorf's films. I don't think I know of Voyager. And the cinematography by Franz Raff, whose lens most of Von Trotter's films, should be studied as textbook examples of narrative film craftsmanship. I wholeheartedly agree. The technical aspects of the film make the time tripping narrative techniques seem natural rather than distancing. Great point, actually. Later in the same review, Scott says what I think is the most precise statement ever written about the film. Marianne and Julianne is a document that struggles to come to terms with an impossible past in a barely feasible present, and its director appears to realise that her film, like its heroines, is trapped by history, which is why she avoids pretending to be definitive, either about the sisters or about the agonies of the nation she has presumed to concretise in their story. This defiant stance of refusing to be definitive about character motivations and ethical-slash-ideological essences connects the film to a wide variety of other masterworks, that have also used contemporary history in a similarly complex way. I'm reminded particularly of Alain René, especially Hiroshima Manamora and Muriel. Alain René is a phenomenal genius. I've, I haven't talked about any of his work yet, and oh, I ought to one of these days. I can't recommend this film highly enough. It is, to my mind, one of the most... Actually, it ends there. One of the most impressive films ever made. I would agree with that.